Even though I'm a rear wheel drive hooligan through and through, there's something about this car that just titillates the senses in a way that's just different from most cars out there. That car, of course, is the Audi S5 Coupe. Let's take it out on some British roads, so hopefully I can not only convey what I feel, but also see if you really need the Audi RS5, or if your bog-standard S5 will suffice. My name's Tom, and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. <laughs> We're on Instagram, so if you want to see behind the scenes footage, weekly updates, and some of the stuff we've got for sale, click the link in the description below. Okay, usual followeth please over with, let's have a look round this rather dark spec Audi S5. Firstly, the engine, this is a 3 litre turbocharged V6. It puts out 354 horsepower and 500 newton metres of torque. Yeah, doesn't sound incredibly special, eh? Well, the turbo is a twin scroll in nature, meaning you get that full 500 newton metres of torque from just 1370 RPM. Yeah, engine response be good in this thing. Of course, with Quattro, it does 0 to 60 in about 4.5 seconds. But what about once you're moving, though? Let's do the 30 to 70 sprint and see what she's got. Okay, sprint over, and we managed 4.15 seconds, a respectable time. However, the lighter but similarly powered BMW M140i was a tad quicker, with a time of just 3.82 seconds. The thing is, though, the interior more than makes up for it, I think. I mean, just look at it. This is still one of, if not my favourite interiors to date. It looks good, it feels good, and you know what? It works good. No annoying touchscreens with sub-sub menus, just classy, high-quality design and enough tech to keep you happy. Literally the only thing I'd add is the ability to fold the touchscreen away, or just find a way of integrating it into the dash a bit better. Unfortunately, this is where most of the good things end, as the rest of the interior is a bit of a mixed bag. The rear seats, whilst comfy, don't offer much room compared to the BMW 4 Series. Fine for kids, but it's just meh for adults. You do get your own climate zone and armrest though, but even then, cup holders for the armrest are optional. Typical Audi on that one. Even the boot, while size and shape-wise is very good, I mean, I even personally got a 55-inch TV in the back of one of these, it's just lacking some basic features, like a 12-volt socket and optional shopping hooks. Come on, Audi, stuff like that really should be standard on an S-car. Anyway, interior tour over, let's get driving. So then, do you need to get an RS5 instead of just an S5? Well, this one today we've got is pretty bog standard. We've got some nice stuff on the interior, but we don't have adaptive dampers and we don't have the sports differential. It's just plain old S5 as you get it from the factory. And going over bumps, yep, sporty, but so well damped. Audi is very good at damping their cars to make them feel controlled but also very comfortable. There's no jiggliness, it's just bump, bump, done. But going over this speed bump here, just doop, 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 doop. I, I don't really know <laughs> how to describe it better than that. It's just very comfortable, very well judged in terms of suspension. Steering, very nice and light, quite precise. Not a huge amount of feel, typical Audi steering really. Um, and for me, that's almost a little bit of a negative because this is an S5, not an A5. And to me at least, this feels identical to the A5. Uh, so does the RS5 in terms of steering rack. The dynamic steering feels identical in this as it does a regular A5, which is a bit of a shame. You know, I'd want it to just be like two turns lock to lock instead of two and a half. But hey ho, you get what you're given at the end of the day and it's still a very nice car. In terms of, yeah, just seat comfort, absolutely fantastic in this thing. I can't get quite low enough, um, which is another Audi trait, which is a bit of a shame. I do feel like I'm kind of sitting on the car a little bit rather than in it. But the actual comfort of the seat is fantastic. You can adjust the pitch of the base. Uh, you've got massage seats as well. 
So you've got wave stretch need, all the standard stuff, you've got lumbar support, and then you have adjustable bolsters as well. So if you are doing some sporty driving, you can pull them in to uh, hold you in a little bit better, which is good because the seats as they are standard don't actually hold you in all that much. And then in terms of parking, it's just about small enough, I'd say. Something like an Audi A6 you might struggle with in London, whereas the S5 is perfectly small enough. Also, that steering rack, it's not sporty, but it does help as you've got plenty of steering angle, which means getting into a space in one go is very easy. And then getting out the car, even though it's a coupe, again, it's just about the right size, so you can get the door to the first notch to get out of the car. But it's just the smoothness of the engine in the gearbox that makes this thing so good. Coming out of junctions, let's see if start stop comes on. Yeah, there we go. Half throttle, bit of a delay, but Quattro and that ZF gearbox get you up to speed nicely. So it's not electric response, but it is still very good. Anyway, as usual, let's do the MPG reset. See what kind of MPG we can get on the motorway. According to Audi, this will do just over 40 miles per gallon on the motorway, which is quite impressive. I'm expecting to see around 38. You never know, we might breach 40. I do actually think in the RS5 review that we did, we got over 40 miles per gallon. I might be wrong, but... I think we did. Anyway, if you want to go and see that, I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner for you. For now though, let's do the usual. Turn the traction control off, get this thing in dynamic and see how it handles a roundabout. Okay then, let's use our favourites button that is now gone from newer Audis. Well, not gone, but you can't change your drive mode with it. To change our drive mode, let's get the traction into dynamic, get the gearbox into manual, see what we can do with this thing. Pick up above 4,000 is lovely. Okay then, let's see what we can do. Quattro just grips, just goes, does its job. Yeah, gets the job done basically, come rain or shine. Throttle response is pretty good. Because it's a turbocharged engine, it's never gonna be an NA engine, but can't complain really. And you know what? It sounds really nice. It has this really, like, throaty V6 noise to it. And on upshifts, you get that kind of like... <clears throat> well, that was a terrible impression. <laughs> you get, like, a really nice upshift fart, shall I say. But even the torque from low down, yeah. Absolutely mega. It's an engine that loves to be driven at eight tenths, this. Not full balls to the wall, but yeah. Really, really smooth, just wonderful. Anyway, let's get into efficiency now. I can't believe this thing has an efficiency mode. And see what kind of MPG we can manage on the motorway. Hopefully we can get 40, but if not, it's not the end of the world. Okay then, coming onto the motorway, if I give it half throttle, this is where you'll notice, yeah. It delays the power a lot in efficiency mode, but it's still a turbocharged V6, so getting up to speed is really easy. <laughs> but yeah, once you're on the motorway, oh, it is lovely. Get the cruise control on 70 miles an hour and chill out. This, in terms of sound deadening, I think is still better than the BMW 4 Series, even the new one, by just a tiny, tiny smidge. And certainly the Mercedes C-Class, you just get no wind noise at all because you've got acoustic glazing on the windows and road noise is just so well subdued. I mean, for mile munching, this is a brilliant machine. Even well above 70 miles an hour, if you're on the German Autobahn, wink wink, uh, you'll just be comfortable. Yeah, there's nothing at all to complain about on the motorway with this thing. Yeah, suspension deals with big bumps well, smaller undulations don't jolt the cabin at all, even though it's still a fairly sporty setup. Steering stays dead straight, and it's that typical Audi, I want to do 155 miles an hour all day, every day, and nothing else. It's just brilliant for that. But yeah, let's slow down and see what the response is like. Let's slow down to 60 miles an hour. 
and then I'm not going to floor it, but I'm just going to give it half throttle. Downshift to fourth. So yeah, okay. If you tell it you want some acceleration, then even in efficiency, it will downshift properly for you. And the gearbox is fairly good. You know, it's still the ZF transmission, so it's still fantastic. But I think BMWs have just they've tuned it slightly better so it doesn't like downshift hold the power and then slam into gear in BMWs it kind of just smoothly transitions gears this is a bit more jerky oh look it's raining it's actually quite good for this car it just makes it more fun right then let's get on the motorway and see what kind of mpg we can manage Okay, so we managed 38 miles per gallon, which is pretty much bang on exactly what I said it would do. I must be good at guessing uh, these figures now. But yeah, 38 mpg, fundamentally not a bad figure. But if there wasn't traffic and we had a slightly longer stretch of road, this thing would easily touch 40 mpg. As you can see, it's still going up now, nearly touching 39 mpg. So yeah, it's pretty efficient given the power, which is nice especially considering this thing is like nearly 1.65 tons. So it's not a lightweight. Anyway, now let's move on to the key thing. Do you need an RS5 or is the S5 fun enough? Let's get to a B-road and find out. Okay, we're back in dynamic. Traction control is off. Let's see what this little S5 is about. Okay, steering, okay, it's wet. Oh, horrible noises of understeer. We are on Continentals. Power out of it. Yeah, it kind of does all right. We're going to have to go around again because that was horrendous. <laughs> this thing with Audis, you have to be very aggressive if you want them to break traction at the rear. But if you're not giving it a lot of throttle or trying to kind of Scandy flick it around the corner. Yeah. It will understeer. It does sound lovely though. In fact, let's do a little sound check. Just put the windows down when I'm under the bridge because it is tipping it down today. Oh, nice. So yeah, it sounds good. And then let off, yeah, that's when you can get it to rotate a bit. Typical Audi stuff, but this is where it is good. Even in the wet, coming around corners, you can just gun it. Oh, I love the noise of this engine. Every single car I've driven with this engine, it just has this lovely rasp and throatiness. Wonderful. Right, take two. Let's not understeer this time. Brakes. Yeah, pretty good. Audi are always very good at brakes. Okay, take two. Understeering. Oh, God, okay. Clearly that's not a very good corner. <laughs> that was horrendous. And thing is, it is very safe, but when a car has an S in its name, it shouldn't really be doing that, should it? Now, see, the RS5 didn't do that. So, yeah, I'm guessing that sports differential does make a little bit of a difference. So if you come off the throttle, it'll definitely oversteer a little bit. However, trying to power slide in this thing, yeah, I don't think it does that. But yeah, come off, tap the brake, yeah, then you can get it to move. <laughs> But, yeah. Trying to power slide doesn't really like doing that. It just sounds good though. I love the noise of this thing. Even driving in a straight line is fun because it 
which has this lovely noise. Right, it's fine. If this is your last chance, I'm going to give you everything you've got. Of course, if I was a massive Wally, I could get this thing to oversteer, but... Oh, good Lord. That hurt me deep in my soul. <laughs> oh, not good. Yeah. Okay, sometimes being more aggressive doesn't work. If I was on a skid pan, I'd be able to do it, but that particular corner, not today. I do think having a, a sports differential would certainly help with that situation. Even planting it in second doesn't seem to get it to uh, poke out at the back, unfortunately. Anyway, where Addies are good is on tight little B-roads. So let's take this car to one now and see how it does. Okay, hopefully you can hear me over the noise of the rain. Let's give this thing a go down here. Hopefully we don't understeer too much. Oh, nice. Yeah, steering, still not a lot of feel, but I know what the car's doing. And Quattro, come rain or shine, performs as expected. Going over bumps, just fantastic. I mean, this car's just got so much grip. I mean, look, it's absolutely tipping it down. You certainly wouldn't be able to go down here this quick in a BMW. <laughs> you can still just plant your foot coming out of corners. Mental. Okay, will we hit 60 before the corner? Let's go. Of course we will. North 60, four and a half seconds in this thing. Again, come rain or shine. It's just a B-road weapon. The suspension is fantastically damped. And I am going to have to slow down now because I literally can't see. But proof is in the pudding with this thing. This is a very wet day and it just performs. It's just a shame on the wider, faster stuff, you do get a bit of understeer. So a track, yes, it would definitely understeer its way around. Uh, apart from the tight corners, but yes, yeah, on a tight B road, very good. Okay then, one last time, let's go. I mean, look at that, it just hooks. Absolutely bad. <laughs> oh, sorry, slow down. The only thing stopping me now is the fact that I literally cannot see through the windscreen. It's mental how capable these things are, though. On a beat road like this, when it's wet, there's not a lot that's going to keep up with you. You know, my BMW M140i, especially on this corner, if I plant my foot like that, I'm just sitting there spinning. <laughs> I'm doing nothing but just sitting there burning rubber. This thing just pings you down the freaking road. Crazy. Anyway, conclusion time. Should you still get the RS5 over the S5? Now, a couple of years ago, I would have probably said no. However, after driving the RS5 and S5 kind of back to back, there is a place for the RS5, even with its very inflated price tag. It does have a slightly better chassis and you do notice it on a B-Road. So the steering, fundamentally the same, but when you're on those wider, more open corners, you do notice it has much less of a tendency to understeer. Uh, partially that's because of the sports differential, but also because it's just a little bit wider, you've just got a bit more lateral grip. Yeah, lateral grip. So it's much more eager to not understeer. Uh, whereas this, without the sports differential, yes, it does do typical Audi steer, shall I call it. Fundamentally though, it's still a fantastic car and one that many should aspire to own. 
as it's just lovely to live with. As a daily driver, this compared to the 440i and the Mercedes C43, I think if you're doing a lot of motorway miles, this is the one you want. Obviously the 440i is a little bit more fun to drive, but when you've got weather like this and you've got places to be, it's the Audi S5 for me. Finish it off with a little rhyme. <laughs> Anyway, as always, if you enjoyed this review, give it a like and why not subscribe as you can see much more content like this and you can see everything we have for sale, which should still include this absolutely wonderful Audi S5. It's got quite a rare interior kit, this. It's got nice carbon fiber and you've got the B&O sound, which is an absolute must in my opinion. But yeah, my name's Tom and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.